All right, so let's talk about counting using sets a little bit. And there's a couple of um, kind of surprising results we have to talk about. So imagine we have the following set. So here's our, our sorry, our following universe. Here is our universe, and the objects in our universe are these dots with circles around them. The dots can be either red, green, or blue, and the circles can be either red, green, or blue as well. So I have two sets here. So the first set are all objects in our universe such that the object has a red dot. The second set, B, are objects in our universe such that X has a green circle. So we're asked, well, what's the cardinality of set A? How many objects are in set A? How many elements does it have? Well, let's count it. So the ones with the red dots, I can see one, two, three, four, five, and I think that's it. So the cardinality of set A is five. There are five objects in our universe that have a red dot. B is a green circle. How many have a green circle? Okay. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five as well. So there are five elements of our universe that have a green circle. So there's five elements in A, five elements in B. So let's say I was interested in the number of elements that either have a red dot or a green circle. Well, one could think, well, there's five elements in the set of red dots and five elements in the set of green circles. So you could think that there are 10, but let's see if we can count them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is all of them. So what's going on here? Why are, when we add five and five, we get 10. Why is there only eight elements here that satisfy that they have a red dot or a green circle? And hopefully you can see what's going on here. There are a few elements, in fact, these two right here, this guy and this guy, that get counted in both the red dot and the green circle. So they're part of this five and part of this five, but we only want to count them once. So if we're just adding these guys, we're double counting the two that have both a red dot and a green circle. So let's subtract that, those two. So what is this? So this is, let me write this out in a little more detail. This is the number of things in A plus the number of things in B. But to avoid that double counting, to avoid counting these two twice, we need to subtract off the number that are in both, that have both a red dot and a green circle. So in this case, there are only eight elements. So in fact, there's nothing special about red dots or green circles or anything like that. The whole thing is that when you're counting the number of elements in a union, you can't just add the number in both sets because you are double counting ones that are in both. So you need to subtract off those. So we subtract off the ones in the intersection to avoid double counting. So here is a formula for the number of elements in a union. You just have to remember 
To avoid double counting, just subtract off the ones that satisfy both A and B, that are in sets A and B. So that's really cool. One more quick note I want to make, and this will come up later, is this definition of two sets being mutually exclusive. So, so, so two sets are mutually exclusive if they have share nothing in common. What does that mean? That means, well, if I take the intersection of them, there's nothing in there. It's just the empty set. So if you're in A, you know you're not in B. It's impossible to be in both if those sets are mutually exclusive. This will come up um, when you learn a little bit about um, statistics and probability. It's a very important concept then. All right, just a quick example to see what's going on here. And we'll do it algebraically, and then I'll talk about what it looks like in terms of a Venn diagram. So we have that the number of elements or the cardinality of set A is 21, the cardinality of set B is 32, and the cardinality of the intersection, or sorry, of the union of these sets is 41. And we're looking for the cardinality of the intersection. So we know, remember, that the cardinality of a union is the sum of the cardinalities of both constituent sets minus that intersection to avoid double counting. Well, let's fill in what we know. We know three of these terms, in fact. So let's just fill them in, and we can solve for the unknown. So the number in both is 41. The number in A is um, 21, the number in B is 32, and we're want to, we want to solve for the number in the intersection. So 21 plus 32 is 53, and that's the number in the intersection. All right, so let's solve for that. We want to guess what our unknown, which is this term here. If you like, sometimes uh, students find it hard to solve for things that aren't just single variables. It just looks a little bit weirder. So maybe if this, if you find it a little difficult, at first you could just rewrite it. Just let this whole thing be x. So this equation would be 41 equals 53 minus x, if you want. Okay, so what can we do? We want to solve for x. We can subtract 53 from both sides. 41 minus 53 is negative 12, and that's going to be minus the number in the intersection. And we just multiply or divide by negative 1. It's the same thing to get x by itself. And we get 12 equals x, which is, of course, the number in the intersection of those two sets. So what does this look like in terms of a Venn diagram? Well, we know that the intersection of both of them has 12 things in it. Maybe I'll label this. This is set A. This is set B. The intersection has 12 things. Well, I know A in total has 41 things. So if we already have 12 in A, how many are going to be in A but not in B? Remember this area here, this is A minus B. How many are in A minus B? Well, it's going to be the number of things in A, but we don't want to include the things in 
the intersection. So it's going to be the 41 in A, and we want to subtract off the 12 in that intersection. So that gives us 29. So there are 29 elements that are in A, but not in B. In total in A, there are 41 elements. The 29 that are not in B, and 12 that are. And similarly, for B minus A, the number, I'll do some black, the number in B minus A, again, that's this bit here, the stuff that's in B but not in A. Well, that's everything in B, but you want to subtract off what's in the intersection, A intersect B. So B has 32 things, the intersection has 12, so there are 20 elements in just B alone. So you can see B has 32 elements in total, 12 that are in A as well, and 20 that are not in A. So here's a nice Venn diagram of that. All right, so let's do one more example. So I'm telling you that there's a set S that has cardinality 15, so there's 15 elements in it, and a set T that has cardinality 12. And what I'm looking for are the largest and smallest possible values for the size of, or the cardinality of, the intersection. So I'll let you guys, or maybe I'll do this in black actually, I'll let you guys have a think about this. Maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out the smallest and largest possible cardinalities, or sorry, it should be S and T, not A and B, for this intersection, which is in here. So pause the video now, and with that last example, hopefully helping you as a little bit of a guide, see if you can figure out the largest and, possible, and smallest possible values that the intersection could possibly be. All right, now that we're back, let's see if your answer is the one that I come up with as well. Now, the whole thing to remember for the key to this problem is realizing that there has to be 15 elements in S and 12 elements in T, and the 15 in S can be split up between these two regions and the 12 elements of T can be split up between these two regions. So let's do the smallest first. So we want the smallest possible value here. So we want as few things as possible to be put in the intersection. Well, that's very easy. We'll just put nothing in there. So I'm just gonna write the card, in, rather than the, num the actual elements, I'm gonna write the cardinality just like I did in the last example. So I could have nothing in that intersection and all 15 elements of S be um, not elements of T and all 12 elements of T be not elements of S. So in this setup, well, we definitely have 15 elements in S, 12 elements in T and nothing in the center. So the smallest, is that the cardinality of that intersection is zero when S and T are mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common. Well, what about the largest? I'll do the largest in a different color here. So we want as many elements as possible in the intersection here. Well, you could think, let's just move all 15 over here into the intersection. And in some sense, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna do it 
but there's going to be a problem. We're going to notice a problem. Okay, I'm going to take all 15 elements here and move them to the intersection. So that's a possibility. That's one way S could look. But then if you think about it, remember T has to have 12 elements. If T has 12 elements, well, this is saying that it has 15 in common with S. So that's not going to work because there's too many elements in T now. There's 15. So unfortunately, we can't move all of them here. We just have to move as many as we can. So let me erase this. Go to my quick eraser. Get one that's a little bit finer. Let's see if I can do this. Oh yeah, that's not too bad. That's not quite going to work for us. So let's think why not. And it's because we can only have the number of elements in T be 12. So the smallest cardinality kind of limits how much can go in that intersection. So really, we can only put 12 things in there because T only has 12 elements. So if T has 12 elements, well, S has 15 elements. We already have 12 since we're saying it's all in common. So there must be three elements left over that are in S that aren't in T. So the largest is, of course, 12. And I want to make a quick note. If you think about it, what is this saying here? This is saying that everything in T, all elements of T, are also elements of S. So a quick note here, this happens when T is a subset of S. So you always get the largest possible things if T here is a subset of S. Every element of T is also an element of S. S. And there's no way for S to be a subset of T because there's too many elements in S. There's 15 elements in S, 12 elements in T. There's no way to say every element of S is an element of T because there's too many in S. But it is possible to do it the other way around. And one quick note to the side. We talked about um, unions and intersections quickly about the number in a Cartesian product. We talked a little bit about this. It's like a multiplication problem. So all it's going to be is the number of elements in your first set times the number of elements in your second set. And I just want to point out something. While kind of a related concept, these multiplication symbols mean something different. And again, by the context, you can see this. This times symbol is between two sets, sets A and B. So this means the Cartesian product. The cardinality of A and the cardinality of B are numbers. They're whole numbers. We can multiply whole numbers with just regular multiplication. So this is a multiplication symbol. Again, we're reusing symbols, and they're related, like the concepts are quite related, but they do mean different things. So I just want to point that out to you guys. So just quickly, there's not too much you can do here, but if the number of elements of A is 3, and the number of elements of B is 7, well, the number of elements of the Cartesian product is 3 times 7, which is, of course, 21 elements. And if you go back and you look at the um, definition of the Cartesian product where we learned that, it's kind of obvious to see how that works. You need, um, tw there's going to be 21 elements um, with where we're going through 
all possible combinations of the three elements of A and the seven elements of B. And there's going to be 21 of those. You can draw it so it looks a bit like a rectangle and you can hopefully see that that's how the multiplication comes into it.